very first YouTube video. Uh, please bear with me if it looks a bit newbie. I'm gonna be learning as I film, but thank you so much for being here. So for my very first video, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the question I get asked the most on my Instagram, which is how I managed to get pregnant with severe PCOS. And I say severe because I had no natural periods in over 10 years, I'd say. So yeah, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of my teenage years, how I found out I had PCOS. And then once my husband and I decided that we wanted to to get pregnant, what we did, what worked, and what did not work. I just noticed I have no earring and I look super weird. <laughs> oh, but I am already prepared here, so I'm just gonna keep talking. Uh, back in my teenage years, uh, I'm 25 now, I did get my period like a normal girl at 12 or 13, I think. 12, yeah. And when I was about 15, I told my mom that I was worried because it had come about two times and then it never came back. So she, t she took me to the doctor, the gynecologist, and he would say that it was normal that many girls don't have regular periods until they are older. So we just ignored it a few months until we kept insisting. I kept telling her that it was really weird. I had bad acne on my face. And we went to another doctor and he told us that, well, we insisted that he, if he could at please do a scan for me. And he did. And he finally told me that I did have PCOS. How he could tell I had PCOS was because in the scan, he saw that my ovaries were, were full of um, little follicles. And before I continue with all these medical terms, I want to tell you that I'm not a doctor and maybe some of the terms I use are not gonna be perfect. So please just take this as a friend's advice and make sure you ask your doctor because I know that every situation is different. So he explained to me that all of these follicles were um, eggs that never matured. And since I had not gotten my period for so long, Sorry, that's my dog. Um, then they were accumulating in there and that's typical in PCOS. So he told me that what I had to do was take birth control pills and he actually scared me because he told me that it was really serious and that I could maybe never have babies and that I could become diabetic really easily. So, um, yeah, so I just did whatever he told me and I was just 15 so I didn't really investigate much uh, when he told me that I had to start birth control immediately. When I started birth control, I was just a teenager, I did get my periods regularly but I gained like 5 kilograms in 2 months. Um, my, ac my acne disappeared but uh, my boobies got really big and I got cellulite on my legs, I remember that. So that those were some of the side effects, but I just had to deal with them because they were the only way I could get my period. Um, and well, I just kept taking them for like 10 years. 10 years? Well, I'm 25. No, like a bit less, like eight years. Um, and I got married when I was 21, so my husband and I decided that we wanted to have babies about a year after. My husband, he's a doctor, so he also knew that because of my condition, um, I was probably gonna take longer to reboot my menstrual cycle and we were gonna have to wait a couple of months to see if my period was actually gonna come back or if the PCOS just stayed the same as it was during my teenage years and if it never came back, then we would have to look for some medication. But we just knew that we were gonna have to spend some time figuring that out. So we wanted to start sooner rather than later. So I stopped my birth control and was secretly hoping every month that I could maybe get pregnant. But I did note, I didn't obviously, but um, I did notice that I got super skinny uh, my boobies got so much smaller. Mm, I was never hungry anymore. And 
I did get a lot more acne. And after waiting around six to eight months, my period had not come back. So we went to the doctor again to see what had happened. I told him all of my story and he recommended that I got some tests done. So I did. And what the tests said were that I, well, they confirmed my PCOS because they measured something called the LH and FSH hormones, which if, if I'm not mistaken, measure uh, the luteinizing hormone and the follicular stimulating hormone. These two hormones, they're supposed to have a balance and in girls with PCOS, they have a ratio that is incorrect. And when this happens, it causes your ovaries to not be in a balance and not mature to enough to ovulate, something like that. So um, that was what was happening and that's why I did not ovulate and never get a period. Since we were already eight months in of being excited that maybe we could get pregnant, we asked for what the options were and he recommended a medication called Clomid, which um, basically forces your body to ovulate. So just so that you can see the timeline here, this was in 2018, at the end of 2018, that we decided to start the Clomid. So we were really excited about that and the doctor recommended uh, that I start with the lowest dose, which was 50 milligrams. I believe there are 50, 100, and 150. After taking the medication, you're supposed to it's a five-day medication and then you're supposed to wait around 10 days that you're fertile fertile <laughs> sorry about my pronunciation i think it's fertile uh and and yeah just wait until the end of the cycle see if you're pregnant and that would be it but since i was so excited i was really intense and i was measuring my ovulation with pee sticks and then when the when the fertile period passed um i would do pregnancy tests every day my husband was kind of freaking out uh and i did notice every day i would Every day that I would take the pregnancy tests, I would put them under a million lights to see if they had a second line, which they never had. <laughs> and finally, one day I grabbed one and it, there was a really, really, really light second line. And I was like, hey, can you see this? It's, it's, it's a second line. I think I'm pregnant. And he was like, no, I, I can't see it. <laughs> uh, so I insisted and we went to take a blood test. Um, when we got there, it said I had like the lowest levels of a pregnancy. So we got really excited. And then a couple of days later, I got my period. It was a chemical pregnancy. And you can Google that if you don't know what it is, but it happens, it's, it's actually really common, but since girls aren't actually testing their pregnancy and their ovulation like I was, they, they never really find out. Just because the, the period comes a, a couple days late and you never even notice. But mm, I was being really intense, so I noticed. Uh, we were a bit disappointed, but we were like, okay, it doesn't matter. It means I can get pregnant. And we tried again the next month. We repeated the 50 milligrams since it worked and I did not ovulate at all. So I never got my period. We had to wait like a, a month and a half to confirm this, um, but it basically didn't work. So the doctor told me I could do 100 this time. So do the, the higher dose, dose, yeah, higher dose. <laughs> and to not bore you with the story, I did 100, didn't ovulate, then I did 150, which is the highest, and I didn't ovulate either. So as you can imagine, I was really disappointed because and frustrated because I was wondering, well, hey, why did it work the first time and with the lowest, and now it's not working at all, like I don't even ovulate. Mm, so it was really sad, and the doctor recommended that I just do uh, of, of another fertilization treatment. So my husband and I uh, started talking about what our options were. 
Sorry, I'm moving so much. It's just that my bump is so big and I'm sitting on the floor. Look. <laughs> so we discussed our options and because I was just 24 at the time and we had no rush, we decided that we were gonna focus on on other stuff like work and traveling and just spending time between him and I and then in one or two years when we were really uh, decided to have the baby we were just gonna do IVF I just relaxed about it and even though I did want a baby I knew that I was gonna have it later so I, I wasn't um, too stressed about it at this point I really did start focusing on other things and because summer was just about to start it was i'd say april of last year 2019 i stopped stopped stressing about the baby thing and was determined to get my periods back because since i was on no medication i still had gotten no regular period after the three clomid fails so um, I forced one with progesterone, which the doctor recommended, just because it had been so long since I had a period. And then I just had to wait to see when my body would, would do it naturally. So that's when all the investigation started. Uh, I was focusing on being healthy and I usually do always take supplements to be, to be in the best shape I can, but um, I started reading a bit more about natural balancing hormone um, supplements and vitamins and stuff like that. This is the part where most of you guys ask uh, which ones I took, how do I take them, how I took them, and how long. So that's what's coming now. I'm gonna write all of these below because I know I can organize my mind a bit better when I see things written down but i'm gonna try to remember everything and i'll i'll describe it better below mm, so i was taking already that gelatinized maca with apple cider vinegar in the morning like the first thing i would drink many people dislike the flavor but i really liked it so that's up to you uh then i would take with my breakfast vtex 400 milligrams and let me try to remember and omega omega 3 so i'd say in, in english it's o omega 3 a multivitamin and then from time to time i would do shakes with uh the this root ash called ashwagandha uh as i said i'm just gonna write them below because it's gonna be a, a lot more organized for you to read and buy if you want but um those were the ones i was taking I was taking before when I didn't get my periods and then when I did start the research I found some really good documents from trusty websites that said that there was this supplement called in inositol I think that's how you pronounce it called yeah in ino, inositol and dicairo which is another type of inositol and these were proven to be better than metformin, which is something that a lot of PCOS girls get recommended to take. And I honestly don't know why it's not better known in the world, but the results and the um, reviews I read about it on Amazon and on a lot of websites were amazing. So many girls said that after five years of not getting their period, they took this for three months and they would get their period and that they got pregnant the second month using it and amazing stuff like that. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna give it a try. I honestly did not have my expectations that high because I thought I had tried it all. And my thought was just that if a strong medication had not worked for me, then why would a natural one work? But it was worth a try, so I just bought them and I added um, 4,000 milligrams the first month and the second I upped it, <laughs> I increased it to 8,000. And again, ask your doctor, 
but mine said it was okay because I think the safest dose is up until 12,000. It's really high, but it, it won't do anything bad to you since it's a natural supplement. And the first month I only took the 4,000 milligrams. And then the second, I took the 8,000 with d and melatonin. I added those two. Uh, the melatonin was two milligrams per night and the d is supposed to be taken at a 40 to one ratio. So if you're taking, um, you can do the math of whatever you're taking, just do a 40 to one ratio. Um, so I started taking these and I didn't notice any changes, but I did see that I had a bit less acne than normal. And one day out of nowhere, my boobies started hurting. And they were always, when I would take my, my birth control, they were always the way I could tell that my period was gonna come because then they would start being a bit more sore. Um, and one day out of nowhere, they, they really started hurting to the point where even if I was at, in the shower, I couldn't get under the under the water because they were really painful. So I was, hey, maybe I'm gonna get my period. I was so excited. And then weeks passed and nothing. And I was so disappointed. I was like, no, this supplement is not working for me. Um, then like the third week, I was like, hey, could I be pregnant? No, it, it, it would be impossible. It's not that easy. And from a huge kit I had bought when I was obsessed with <laughs> with measuring my ovulation and my tests at the very beginning, uh, I I checked on in in that bag, and I had no pregnancy sticks left just because of my past obsession. But I did have ovulation sticks, so I peed on one of those, and it was super positive. And I was like, hey, it had never come back positive. I was like, hey maybe I am ovulating but it's such a coincidence that I caught it just today because the ovulation window is really small so I just had that in my mind and was thinking hmm so if I'm ovulating right now then why are my my boobies hurting I had kind of a hint but I didn't want to say anything yet because I didn't want to get too excited then the next day I did another ovulation stick which were the only ones I had and it was positive again and then I googled it and everyone said that when you're pregnant ovulation sticks can catch the pregnancy hormone and they appear super super positive oh so I was so excited I I didn't want to tell my husband yet so that he didn't get excited either if it was a negative but I went running to the pharmacy and took a test and it was positive. So that means that on my second month of taking the inositol and the melatonin and the d I did ovulate and I got pregnant that same month. That's my PCOS story and how I managed to get pregnant with natural supplements, even when the medication didn't work. So I hope you guys can take some tips from this video because I know that when I was doing my investigation to start taking the supplement, I watched absolutely everything that is on YouTube and in Google and everything. And it was just a few articles that I'm gonna link below so that you can read them too, that, that really helped me. So hopefully this can help some of you and you're another lucky story that, that gets pregnant the second month. So yes, thank you for being here and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, if you like pregnancy and mommy videos, uh, please like and subscribe below because by the time I post this, I'm probably gonna have one or two subscribers on my new channel. Um, but I hope it grows with time and thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.